So welcome to everyone who's joined us um, today for um, the webinar, Top Marketing Trends for 2021 and Beyond. I'm Justine Gonshaw, I'm Head of Marketing at Mag Labs and uh, a huge welcome and thank you to uh, Colin Hadley, um, MD and founder of Ideas and Impact. And um, Colin is, um, well, has, a, has had an illustrious career at Heinz uh, which is where we know him from and he's recently um, started his own business and uh, he collaborates with um, with businesses and, and helps that helps to support their their marketing that's correct Colin isn't it absolutely Thanks. and Colin will be um, sharing his ideas once I've um, outlined some of my pick of the uh, the top marketing trends uh, for this year and I have to say these are my pick um, and you may agree or disagree, but I think uh, some of these will be um, everlasting and some of these are uh, a little new. And you can disagree with those too, if you like. Okay, so um, as we were planning um, this webinar, things seemed a little bit brighter. We were in a slightly brighter period. 2021 was going to be the year to rebuild. It was all going to be different after a, a really tumultuous 2020 I won't go through all the, the details. We all know what happened. Um, you know, it's a daily, a, a daily, um, <laughs> daily picture of doom, really, and it hasn't changed. But has it? You know, is 2021 continuing where we left off, or um, or is it um, a new year with um, a new focus and renewed energy? Um, I think there is a light at the end of the tunnel. It may be a little way off, but in the meantime, as as marketers, you know. We, um, we need to, we're supporting businesses who um, need to continue to operate and, uh, and find a way forward. So um, we need to focus on keeping our brands relevant, staying connected to customers, and obviously making new connections with prospects while also managing a whole host of challenges. You know, I don't think it's anything different for us. Yes, the pandemic's brought a, a whole range of sort of different issues and um, it might be mentally challenging. We might be, we might be working remotely, so it's difficult to, uh, to brainstorm or do things in the way we used to. But you know, marketers are always um, facing challenges and uh, we do tend to be largely positive. Um, we're quite driven and we're, we're certainly used to being thrown a challenge or two and, um, and definitely used to dealing with, uh, with budget cuts that come out of the blue. And so a lot of this won't be particularly new to us. Um, the environment's new, but the actual things we're dealing with um, aren't particularly new. So if I go to, to my pick of trends, and I'll stress again, these are my pick of trends. It doesn't matter um, whether you know, you're dealing with uh, B2B or B2C customers. You know, everyone's looking for a brand they can trust, a brand that is going to, um, to meet their needs, to make their lives easier or happier. And making a connection um, and a positive one and delivering on our promises ensures we build a stronger, sort of more connected customer base. That's not particularly new. Um, what we can't do anymore is to do randomly send out messages, as um, some businesses have in the past, and hope that's going to be a connection, because that's, that's going to be pretty much hit and miss. And in this sort of environment um, where everyone is, um, is going online, um, it, we need to be more focused. I think that is, that is new. I think it has evolved. I think it's something that's been coming, uh, something we've all been thinking about and working on, but we're definitely... Um, it's definitely important now to make a real connection. So how do you do that? I think it's through meaningful conversations um, because that's the best way to engage with customers or prospects. People want to feel that you, you understand them, that you appreciate them, you appreciate their business. And those who succeed will engage with, uh, with online communities and genuinely have meaningful and long-term long conversations. You know, we're people dealing with people. I mean, and that's always been marketing. We haven't always treated it like that, but, but essentially that, that's where we are. I think we also have to remember we're doing battle, if you like, in a very crowded arena. Um, so the, the demand for engagement um, has, has begun. Um, certainly last year, um, everyone up their level, they, everyone moved online. We were forced to move online. 
and um, it's going to be, continue to be a major trend. So I think we need to dare to think outside the box, try something new and ask the question, how can I add value to my customers and prospects? Clearly, having digital expertise is important, but more than that, reaching out and building a community is just as critical. So clearly, underpinning all this activity um, with digital marketing tools and social media is going to be important. I mean, some people, um, some sources, I've looked at research online and some sources have estimated that they're going to spend about 25% or more on digital this year. Um, and some people are saying sort of 50% or more. So with that extra spend, what are you gonna do with it? I think you know, innovation is key. Just don't do more of the same. You know, it's easy to, to, to do more of the same, but don't. I think it's, you know, innovation is key. Um, adapting, thinking about new ways of doing things. And, um, and, and trying to be a bit different, you know, standing out in a, in a, in a busy marketplace is, is challenging, but it's important. But to do that, you need to understand your customer, uh, you need to target customer profiles and ensure you're relating and appealing to them through the most appropriate social media channels. Clearly, as we've, I think I've, I've talked about in a, a past webinar, you know, blasting uh, your messages out across you know the same message in the same way across all um, social you know media channels is not going to be effective it's just not going to work it's all about as i get, you know go back to again making that connection and then converting through a, a clear call to action and you can challenge me on that uh, but it's my firm belief I think in addition, I think, you know, for, for many businesses, turning to digital um, might also include selling online or e-commerce. And again, we, we ran a, um, a webinar last year on e-commerce because shortly after the pandemic, um, you know, retail, the high street um, pretty much closed down. So we had no choice. A lot of people moved um, to e-commerce because they felt that was the only option. And then you also had a lot of new startups with great ideas who went online. And I see e-commerce developing further this year and obviously beyond. But as, as e-commerce develops, people are going to further define their offerings and expand their online presence. Um, but you know, everyone's thinking of doing the same. So it's going to be competitive. So it's, you know, it's not easy to um, to, to win the marketplace, so you need to be different. You need to look different. You need to you need to do things differently. You need to appeal to your um, to your specific segment. So, who is that segment? Another um, key marketing trend um, on my my long list here is, um, and I'm not going to go into big long detail in all of them. I promise you, is um, increasing personalization, and that goes back to the conversations. You know, connecting. Because to connect with people, you need to, um, they, they need to feel that you're actually reaching out and touching them. So we're going to need to look, marketers are going to need to look for new ways, more creative ways to engage with customers and prospects um, through, you know, our outreach campaigns. And I was sitting next to a lady last year um, at a marketing dinner. It was a, our very first Mag Labs marketing dinner and our last one, I hasten to add, because clearly... A week later, we uh, we locked down, and um, she was telling me that um, you know direct mail was considered dead. That you know it's a standard stuff that you know came through the mailbox and it was so boring. But actually, she thought that um, it was going to be reinvented. And there is a lot of um, thinking out there that relevant direct mail is a is now a good way to um, to to send personal um, messages through. And clearly, you could also do it through um, interactive um, virtual experiences. That, that's um, relevant for probably some of the younger generation. And then, you know, relevant educational content, you know, showing people that you're actually helping them either to learn new skills or to develop their knowledge in a, in a, in a real area of interest for them. And while we're doing that, while we're sending out these messages, I think it's important to remember when I use marketing automation platforms, and, um, and yes, it helps you get your message out there, but it is just a way of getting your message out there. It's not the answer. It's not gonna personalize it for you. It's not gonna sort out your campaign and, and, and you know, create a call to action. That needs to be, that needs to be something that, that you think about, that your teams think about, 
And that needs to be data driven, understanding your market segments. And I think Colin's going to speak to speak about that a little bit more in a minute. But I think, you know, we really need to understand people using data to understand our specific segments and sending messages, relevant messages out to those those key market segments. Uh, which are truly personalized. So they really fill them. Something that I think is newer um, and possibly, um, and some of our clients are already using is the, um, the power of uh, live streaming. I think if you, um, if you think about the fact that um, over a hundred million internet users are watching um, live video today um, on a phone or on a, a laptop, that's pretty big. Um, and that's an 80% increase um, over the past 12 months. And the expectations are that is only going to grow, that we're probably going to see another 80% plus increase this year. And given that social media channels, um, platforms are all highly committed to, um, to, to live streaming and live streaming through their, their channels, it's something we're going to need to consider more. Um, it's often easy to think of things like new ideas, like the power of live streaming, and it's not new, new, that, um, that it's not our segment, you know, it's not going to be valid for our segment, it's sort of probably more relevant for entertainment or, 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 or a different market segment, because they know what to do with it. But actually, you know, maybe thinking outside the box, maybe there is stuff that um, specific segments who wouldn't normally use um, live streaming could think about, just an idea. Because if someone has signed up to, uh, to watch a live streaming event, they're actually committed, they're engaged to it. It's not like coming across content on, on a social media channel, they're actually, they're actually engaged in it, they've committed to it and they're probably going to react to it. So if you get one person who's committed to, live, to watch a live streaming event and you've got 10 who see something they come across, that one person is much more likely to take action. So I think the, uh, the power of live streaming is, is something to, to really consider about. Right, I'm going to get a, a move on because I, I don't want to bore you to death. Um, the other things I think that are really important, and I think they, they probably um, have been important and will, will continue to be important, are obviously brand relevance and values. And uh, it comes back to the customer again, you know, brand relevance and values. You're putting the customer at the, the centre of everything you do. Um, and to do that, you need sales, marketing, and customer to all be aligned. Often you have competing demands within your sales, customer, and, uh, and marketing teams. And everyone's got their, their targets and their focus. They don't necessarily pull together and, uh, and come across as a, as a tight unit and, uh, and, get, and, and work as one. So if you can work as one, I think it will really make a difference. I think in addition, you know, brands need to demonstrate today's values, you know, the importance of delivering on promises you know, and value for money, um, which I think is quite tough at the moment. And then there's the key areas of mental health and wellness, you know, things that are particularly important in focus at the moment with us all working remotely, with, with us homeschooling too. You know, there's no doubt um, mental health is on the agenda. It's on everyone's agenda. Um, and so brands need to pay more attention to it. And uh, a number of, do, number of brands do it very well. Um, but um, not enough brands, I think, um, are currently thinking about it. And then there's obviously the ongoing sort of sustainability and environmental issues that, uh, that are so important to all of us, like they have to be. Um, so we, we can't forget about those either. I think we're, um, you know, if we looked at all these, we're probably thinking, oh my God, you know, I'm not going to get anything done this year, but it's all about focus. So, um, you know, no panic thinking about all these things, because actually they come together as a nice package. And then last but least, and I'm not going to waffle on too much longer, uh, building and buying local. And I think this is something that probably started um, with the onset of, uh, or the interest, the growing interest in buying organic. And that probably started five plus years ago, maybe a little bit longer. People wanted to be a little bit healthier and, um, and so they buy from the local organic farms. And the pandemic appears to have um, sort of pushed that, that theme, that, that trend a little bit more. Um, clearly that there were issues in um, supply um, at, early on in the pandemic. We didn't have PPE, so we now have the ability to, um, to create and, and uh, manufacture our own PPE in the UK. And um, with Brexit, um, they continue, will continue to be um, supply issues. So I think 
a local presence, um, showing a commitment to, uh, to, to British sort of uh, products and, um, and goods will, will continue to be a, um, a strong trend and, and something you can help to, to focus your brand around. Even a global company can, can do that quite well. And I've seen a, a couple who've done it, done it very nicely. Right, so underpinning all those trends um, are, I think, sort of the standard pillars that um, um, marketeers really need. I think we're a resilient bunch. We're used to adapting, but I think it's never been more important to be resilient. And a lot of this will be underpinned with good technology um, to support our, our marketing. A lady, um, a head of uh, marketing at a law firm, uh, presented on a webinar last year for us. And she was talking about, this is about three, four months after the pandemic started. And she was talking about how, because she had brilliant platforms and technology in place, yes, it was a bit of a, um, a pain to move remotely and to work remotely as a team and to do things um, felt a bit different, but they were set up. It took them a matter of days and hours or days, whereas other companies, you know, had to get laptops out and um, they had to think about how they were gonna work. So it's never been more important to have good technology in place. There's also um, obviously the adaptability, the ability to change. And Toby Milan, who was going to be our speaker, one of our, our, our second speaker today, um, is a great example of that. He's from Expositionist, MD of Expositionist, a, um, um, an exhibition company. He's been in the exhibition business since, um, since he started his working life and um, done global ex exhibitions, um, traveling from one place to another, putting them up, taking them down. Um, uh, brilliant exhibitions, creative exhibitions, interactive exhibitions for, um, for the, the biggest brands. And overnight, that exhibition market sort of went away. And he quickly realized that um, if he didn't change, his business was, was probably going to be um, dead for a, a year or two or as long as it took. So he now does um, weatherproof um, outdoor protective um, equipment and um, structures. And um, the reason he's not speaking today is because he has so much business, he has, a, he has a deadline. So, I mean, that's great news. It's showing that... Um, those who have adapted and changed have done really well in the pandemic. And there are lots of other examples, I would say. And clearly, as I've said before, businesses need to stay relevant. And um, that's the center to all this. If we can't stay relevant, we won't stay in business. So as I finish up and hand over to Colin, I think obviously 2021 is going to remain challenging. Yeah, we're probably going to see budget cuts. Yes, um, we're going to see more of the same but there will be light at the end of the tunnel. And so if we focus on this path of, you know, connecting to customers, understanding their needs, we're gonna come out fighting. And I believe, um, I believe certainly some companies I've seen are, are well-placed and others are, are trying to build that, um, that mechanism to, to be well-placed. So just very quickly before I hand, on, hand over to Colin, I'm going to ignore this, um, just a, a quick pitch about Mag Labs. Uh, we are a technology focused business. Um, we have our, our own technolo technology platform, Stratum, and most of our products and offerings are built on Stratum. We have an end-to-end -end events management tool. We have a, uh, an off-the-shelf um, digital as asset management tool, Sargasso. Uh, we create bespoke um, solutions on Stratum. We also have a uh, workflow tool, and there's other bits and pieces. And then we have the digital arm who... Um, do social media, they do websites, and um, in fact, portals, anything related to social media. So with that, I'll thank you, and I'll move on to Colin, who's going to uh, just tell me when you want me to move your slides on, Colin. He'll yeah, introduce sure. himself. No. Thank you, Colin. Welcome. No, thanks, Justine. Um, no, great to, to sort of uh, be on this call, and I was sort of attracted by the, the challenge of what are the trends, and if anyone can tell you what's going to happen in the next four or five years, then they're lying, because it's been a... <laughs> an amazing change you know we've got an experiment where you know seven billion people have gone through a massive transformation in their lives uh, where technology and, and and digital has become has exploded i mean when, when my uh, my father-in-law starts using zoom and the guy's a total technophobe you can see that there's been a, a big wave a big change that's been that's been happening in the world so i was really excited to kind of uh, come on and, and and talk a little bit and, and what i thought i would do 
it's very hard to kind of summarize and say, you know, what are the trends? So what I thought I would do is talk more about what can you practically do? You know, what can you do in, in your business world um, to make the most of this of this change? Because there's always opportunities through change. So just on the next slide, Justine, I wanted to just explain kind of, you know, who we are, what we do. So, um, you know, I have spent all my life really in big client side branded companies. So Molson Coors, Kimberly Clark, NatWest Group, um, Kraft Heinz, um, and always had a, an ambition really to go on my own. And what I what I do really is I've always been somebody who's great at collaborating, bringing people together, solving things, uh, having making solutions happen. And so what we do at Ideas and Impact is we is we accelerate commercial uh, growth. We do that by challenge taking problems and working with clients. So we're not you know, a McKinsey that takes it away and gives you a total operating model. We work uh, with you to do that. Um, it's all about agility. And actually, um, for me, it's been a, a bit of a humbling experience because when I left big corporate, I thought I would be doing, and in fact, I just got my first client. It was all going to be about face-to-face -face workshops. Like the story on the exhibition story, that disappeared overnight. And I decided to really invest much more on, on virtual working. Um, so you can see it's already impacted me the day I first started my, my new business it already had to change and adapt. So it's a great message to have. And we codify processes, we turn them into, into, into systems uh, like ideation and expert facilitation designed to value. We, we, we del deliver those through codified approaches, but working uh, with clients. So that's a bit about my, my background. So I've kind of lived the big corporate branded world, but also I understand uh, the difficulties of a small business, uh, having run one now for the last year. So on the next slide, what I thought I would I would do is talk about five things um, that, that, that I think are themes that you can use to drive growth in this crazy time and hopefully ride some of those trends. Um, and these are all going to sound very, very general. And you're going to say, Colin, that's obvious. But I'll try and give a bit of flavour to each of these um, themes uh, and, a, and a couple of examples and, and give you a few practical things um, that you can do rather than just talk about it in terms of the theory. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is understanding your customers. So if we just go to the next slide, uh, Justine. Um, and I've just put, I just, I just grabbed this image. I've put the sourcing on um, about what's gonna happen after COVID. We've all been through that stage of fear and learning to live with it. We're all frustrated, we all know that. But actually, COVID, some industries have, have prospered during this time. You know, Kraft Heinz, my, my old company, has done very well because people have moved towards sort of comfort food and um, everyday um, foods. Other businesses, of course, the hotel industries, the, the pubs and, and clubs have, have really struggled. But actually, during this time, this huge transformation that we're happening will present opportunities for all sectors. And so the best way of starting to anticipate what those opportunities are, are to really understand your consumers and your customers. Now, I've got a, I've got a, a lot of respect um, for kind of the power of Amazon and how Jeff Bezos has grown a consumer focused business. And they, they have a story. I'm not sure if it's true, but he has a, a chair that's in all board meetings and it's an empty chair and that represents the consumer. So the consumer is always very much at the heart of, of what they do. And I think the top, I suppose the tip that I would say, and, um, and actually this is something that I've realized coming out of corporate is first of all, make the time to do this. So how do you balance thinking versus doing? It's so easy, you're so busy, you're doing your spreadsheets and your payroll and you're looking at your, your, your prospecting. How do you make the time to really think about your customers and your strategy? So the first thing is create the time to do that thinking. So it's, it's a very important phase we're coming into through COVID. I think the second area around that is thinking about um, consumers and customers at different altitudes. So we all live very much in our, in our silo, our particular business, our particular situation. And that's fine. And probably we spend 80% there, 90% of our time there. But I would encourage you just to lift your head up a bit and think not just about your immediate business ambition and your situation, but also about your category, your competitors, uh, what are they doing? What's happening in that broader category? What are the trends in it? And that's great. But then the big unlock is to lift your head a bit further up and think about the cultural landscape. What's happening in people's lives? Because 
that's much more interesting than your business to them. You know, what's happening in their lives, what's happening in culture. And if you can connect to those things, then you can have some big unlocks. And it's amazing how, as the world changes, it sneaks up on us. If you think about the whole drive about identity, uh, Black Lives Matter movement, the Me Too movement, these things are happening and changing society. And we need to be thinking about that in terms of our, of our businesses. And if we don't, particularly with massive change, we'll miss something. You know, I love that story about blockbusters. Um, they actually refused to buy Netflix um, about 15, 20 years ago. Netflix wanted to, to, to get sold for them $50 million and they died. Why did they die? Because they thought about the in-store experience. They thought that choosing your DVD on the shelf was an amazing part of the experience. But as soon as technology unlocked streaming, they died. Um, I think their peak turnover was about $6 billion a year. Netflix is already at 20 billion. So you need to watch those things. Think a bit higher up. Think about cultural and consumer landscape, not just about your situation. So that's the first area. The second area I wanted to talk about, Justine, just so you can flick us on to the next one, is about adopting a growth mindset. And that is uh, quite a difficult thing to do. It's so heavy. You know, you watch the news, it's quite depressing. You're going to have lots of problems with existing customers, with technologies, but based on things like COVID and changes of the environment. But you really need to move into a growth mindset. You need to break down those challenges uh, and really, you know, drive your business forward. Um, really good example of that is someone like uh, Elon Musk in terms of SpaceX, which is an amazing transformation of the of space technology, which feels like it has so many barriers. And what he did was he broke down using first principle thinking. You know, the problem was he couldn't afford to make a rocket. They cost billions. And he, he took a growth mindset. He broke the problem down into lots and lots of um, smaller questions. And then he answered those and found that he could actually provide a much cheaper rocket by challenging every single raw material within that construction. That's a positive growth mindset. Big challenges, but how can you, you know, change? How can you move forward on that? There's a great book um, by uh, Matthew Syed, um, which is called Rebel Ideas, and it's definitely one, one to look at. Um, and what he talks about is this growth mindset, but also about diverse thinking, about challenging those assumptions, not relying on what you thought of in the past, uh, challenging, breaking those assumptions to really drive growth in the future. So really try and adopt a growth mindset. There's lots of reading about it, but in these challenging times, it's essential. In my next slide, thank you very much. Uh, we're, we're getting very slick here now, Justine. Um, <laughs> the next one is about um, really having a crystal clear strategy. Now, I know you, many of you will say to me, we have a very clear strategy, but when you dig into it, it's the level, you know, it's that real detailed strategy because ultimately strategy is about making choices. You know, you have limited resources. You have to decide where you're going to play. If you understand your consumer, you understand your brand, you have to say, you know, I'm going to invest here, here and here. And you need to make sure you, you stick to that and you drive your resources through that. So you are going to need to place some bets in this new future world. You're going to have to make some choices, um, but documenting that, having a discipline around strategy. And I've noticed this particularly, um, you know, there was a massive strategic process that I used to lead at Kraft Heinz where it was you know, super disciplined and we still missed a lot. But actually I've been working with some, some SMEs recently and um, what I found there is they thought they knew their strategy, but actually when you, you dig into it, there were gaps or there were people in different parts of the team that thought the priorities, um, you know, they were aligned. So absolutely land your strategy, play some bets uh, and really invest in your future. And the next one uh, I wanted to talk to you about was about integrating your marketing. And there's lots of, again, lots of stories about this. You know, how do you drive integration? I think one of the most powerful integrators ever would be Apple, who integrated all the way through from communication, design, aesthetics, the in-store experience, and they really have two principles and integration. One is simplicity. So technology was getting much more complicated and more features and benefits. They took a decision about simplicity and also about really investing in design and aesthetics. How do you bring that design all the way through all the touch points of marketing? Um, every business could do that. If you know what you stand for, whether you're a sole trader, if you're a medium sized business, you should have a purpose an ambition in the world, a clear point of view. And every, everything you do, every display ad, every communication 
should ladder up to that ultimate ambition because really you know consumers and customers have got more pro other priorities in the world so how can you make every dollar every pound you spend count by integrating your marketing and we've been doing a lot of work on that uh, recently with a number of clients so you can see that that red thread all the way through the business and my last one to talk around and this is sort of my express through five key areas um, which kind of actually overlaps with what, what, what Justine was saying as well. Um, there are, I've looked through various business reports, uh, a nice hub is around HSBC, there's a good uh, website there, um, but there are three things I'm hearing more and more from all sorts of different companies that I'm working with. Of course there's digital, you know, digital in some categories has, you know, doubled or trebled um, in terms of not just purchases but also views and also reviews. So the whole, the whole digital engine has had a massive adrenaline kick through COVID and it, it's not going to go away because it's so convenient and people have been introduced to it. So you have to have a digital offer, not just in terms of communication, but also in terms of um, actual sales uh, and companies that even have been kind of bricks and mortar or have been you know, not, in, not in that world have moved to online recently. And the second one is you have to innovate. Now, innovation sounds a bit scary, but Innovation is making sure that you have a distinctive point of view. You're offering solutions that appeal to people in this new world. Um, innovation can be about features and benefits, but also it can be about communication as well. But how can you stand out um, in a changing environment? Um, and the last one, which is it's not just a greenwashing. It's not just sort of ticking the box. When this COVID thing dies down, there will be a rise again of this uh, slight problem, which is we're kind of killing the planet. And there will be a lot of news and, and, and that will have a resurgence. And all companies that certainly I speak to are making a, a real effort in that space. Um, and that's in every aspect of it. Uh, it's about the people they work with and the supply chains they operate, but also about how they produce their products and dispose of them and how they use resources. You need to have a point of view on that. You need to be making progress, obviously for yourselves, for the planet, but also consumers expect that. It's, uh, it's an absolute must. And 86% of companies in the UK believe that's an important part of their strategy over the next few years. So that's my brief foray through five things that you can do. But I certainly see it as a, there are some real opportunities. You know, when we get through this COVID thing, are we going to return to some really celebratory times people are going to want things people are going to want new solutions um and i'm sure many of your businesses can can offer that so uh, good luck over to questions then are we going to receive a recording and slides of the webinar we, we won't be um sending out the slides but certainly there is um well you'll see the slides as part of the live recording so so yes but the slides don't come out separately to answer that let's have a look at these I can get into uh, the book I mentioned was uh, Rebel Ideas by Matthew Syed. Okay, oh, okay. lovely. <laughs> Thanks, Lorenzo. You've already answered the question. I think that's the questions. Are there any other questions for us? Oh, here we are. Let's see. I'll put it up, I'll put it in the uh, chat. Matthew Syed. <laughs> Let's put it in the all chat. done. Let's all synchronize the chat and the question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are there any other questions for either Colin or myself? Oops. So what I've done, I can't see any questions anymore. So when I stop sharing, then we might be able to see questions. You never know. I suppose equally, are there any comments that we've obviously had lots of different trends you talked about? Is there a particular trend in your business that you feel you need to really work on? What do you think about gaming? You gamification or gaming, the game, gamification or the industry of gaming? Do you want to clarify, Monica? Industry. What do I think about gaming? <laughs> after you just do <laughs> thank you colin 
Um, I actually have, I know someone who's recently launched um, an app and a game, and it's a very competitive industry. So I think, um, I think it, the same things hold. You need to, um, you need to rise above and, uh, and innovate. Because I think if you don't stand, you know, if you don't do something a little bit different, uh, there, there's so much competition, there's so much noise out there, there are so many games. I think that there was the day when you could um, launch an app or launch a game and it automatically went to number one or automatically got rated. I think now you need to have so many ratings before it, uh, before it sort of um, even shows up somewhere. So you, you, it's the same sort of uh, message. Clearly it's a slightly different industry, but it's still about, you know, connecting with your um, with your target audience you know what do um, what do they want you know how's it going to make their life a bit um, how's it going to make their life better is it value for money are you delivering on the promise it, it's the same messages I think you know what whatever you're doing if you can stick with those standard sort of ideas at the back of your head and as Colin said you know really work out really plan that growth mindset you know don't think about um, that I've got everything covered, that I've got my strategy, because nine times out of 10, unless you um, actually, my, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this or not, but unless you get someone external in to help you plan, help you think about your strategic process, you're going to go through the same process that you do every year. And it's going to be, you're going to tick the boxes, you're going to get the answers, but they're the answers that you're expecting to get. So you, to think outside the box, you either need to take everyone out and challenge them in a different environment or get someone who's going to challenge your thinking, an external person who doesn't necessarily know you and is going to ask the difficult questions that you don't want to be asked. Um, and that's my experience working in a whole variety of SMEs, um, big corporates. It's sort of always the same. You go through the process, you think you're doing what you have to do, but are you really challenging yourselves? Well, not really, because unless someone comes in and says, well, have you thought about and, and why are you doing that? You know, you've done that for four years and actually the return on investment is pretty low. Or, um, you know, you guys um, think you're doing everything that's all aligned, but the messages in this campaign and that campaign don't stand together and they don't seem to, they don't seem to um, align with your strategy. So I think, I think that's important. Anyway, how can you stand out with everyone going digital? So I've got that one. So yeah. I, won't, I, won't do, I think your game, the answer was great. Thank you for that. I think um, digital is really interesting. And um, there was a big digital transformation project I was involved with at, at Craft Times. And obviously, Maglab, you ran our website for a long time. I think the one is there's all the hygiene stuff. So actually, all that SEO, all of that keywords, I know the Amazon algorithm is ridiculous. Sorry, the Google algorithm is ridiculously complicated and changes and moves. But there's still you still need to have your, your basic hygiene. That factor. You also need to have a very clear view on your, your content. You need to make sure that your business has a, a distinctive point of view. You can do a lot, invest in the graphics, invest in the wireframes, invest in the user experience of your of your um your you know your what your content. I think the other one is that if you think about that concentration span of two or three seconds or a display ad, or it means that your creativity has to be really, really powerful. So I think there's one level of creativity, which is very clear messaging, again, which is integrated. The other one, which is interesting, particularly on social, is that I think recognize that it is an advertising medium. There's no such thing really as organic reach in the same way as it used to, you know, as people used to talk about. But, but secondly, you, you know, almost use it like a PR channel, in my view, which is create content, which is talkable. So if the mechanism is social media, you need people to pass that on. Therefore, it has to be interesting. So worry as much about the, the talkability of it. It has to have a product truth, you know, or back to your brand. It has to have a meaning. But actually, people are much more interested in their lives than they are about your brand. So your brand has to tap into something that's, that's bigger in the community that you could then sort of link yourself to. So there's a few different layers there, but hopefully that gives you a flavor. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is a challenge. And... Um... You know, it's connecting, it's making that connection again, I, I would say, but um, I agree, totally agree with Colin. Right, we have um, three minutes. Um, I've answered that other question um, and we'll, we'll reach out to you. Are there any, any, any last questions before we close in the last three minutes? Okay, I think that's a no. So I really want to thank you, Colin, you're amazing. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> really impressed. You too. <laughs> you, you stood in at the you stood in stood in. I was really happy that you were willing to do it. Um, and we finally actually got to meet, even if it's via Zoom. <laughs> um, so very grateful to you. Um, I thought it was amazing today, and um, hopefully we'll be able to do another webinar in the near future. And thanks for everyone who tuned in. Yeah, and block out everyone to block out half a day to do some thinking. This is not an easy time. Good luck to everyone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and don't be and um, don't be knocked by the um, the current um, doom and gloom. There is there is there is better on the way, and we we will all rise above the challenge. We're marketeers are at the end of the day. We uh, we always do. We always find a way through the the misery to uh, to give that sort of positive um, that positive message. We have to because that's that's sort of our role in uh, in the business. If we don't stay positive, I don't think uh, I don't think anyone um, anyone else will. <laughs> We, we drive the uh, we drive the positivity. Thank you very much. We'll end there. Thanks. Bye bye.